back to the dish. As always, I'm Jalen Russell, joined again by Jalen Gray, giving you the latest from the NBA this week. Now, the trade deadline just passed on Thursday at 3 o'clock. Definitely quieter than last yeah, it was, year. It was not very many, uneventful. Yeah, not many big names moving. We had a few moves, though. Channing Fry went to Cleveland, Brandon Jennings to Orlando, uh, Heinrich to Atlanta, and Randy Ford to OKC. Uh, what do you think? Who do you think were the winners as far as teams go of the trade deadline this year? I actually think one of the teams that kept it very simple, uh, the Clippers, uh, when they traded for Lance, traded Lance Stevenson for Jeff Green. I just think that they got rid of dead weight on the end of their bench with Lance Stevenson. He was playing a little bit, but he was only averaging about five points and two rebounds a game, so they weren't really doing anything with that. Jeff Green, on the other hand, averages what twelve point two points per game about five rebounds, and he's also a guy that can pretty much score whenever he wants to if you need him to. It was a good move to get rid of Lance Stevenson because obviously he's had his issues pretty much everywhere since Indiana. Yeah. But how much is he really – like, the way I always see the trade deadline is you're making a move to say what you're doing for the rest of the year moving forward. So really it's, it's a statement time where you're saying we're either making the playoffs and making a push for the championship or we're just killing the team and we're going to uh-huh. try to get a good draft pick. These guys, I don't think this gets them any closer to a championship. They can't compete with Golden State still with Jeff Green. He's not going to no, add anything can. to that team. But neither can anybody else in the West besides San Antonio. True. So I'll say it's a good move, but I don't know that it actually makes them the winners. I would say Detroit is the winners for sure. Oh, no. Oh, because no. they added Tobias Harris, which they're in so ninth place So that's going to get right them now. past Cleveland. They're in ninth place right now. This is them saying they're making the And playoffs. Toronto. They got rid of Brandon Jennings. It can make them competitive with them. They okay. got rid of Brandon Jennings, who's right. just really a copy at this point. Now they have Reggie Jackson. Um, they added Marcus Thornton and Monte Yunus, who also add depth to their mm. bench. And Tobias Harris can be a starter for that team. They really they don't have a whole lot of strength at the wing positions, shooting guard and small forward. I think that he adds a whole other dimension. He's young. He's athletic. He mm-hmm. can be a starter. He's So that moves Stanley Johnson into a smaller role. It gives them time to develop. And they also have him locked in for a couple more years. I mean, I think it was a great move for them to, you know, get Brandon Jennings off his off their books, you know, since he's not really producing anymore since that uh, Achilles injury. But I mean, I think that's it could possibly raise them into, you know, playoff contention. They're gonna make the playoffs, but they're they're definitely not gonna be, you know, like in the top four or anything anytime soon. I don't know. They have a really young core together. They've got Reggie Jackson, Tobias Harris, and Stanley Johnson. They're going to probably re-sign Andre Drummond in this offseason. That's a nice young core to build around moving forward. They've got all those guys locked in until 2018-2019. I'm just going to say the Clippers were one game away from uh, getting to the Western Conference Finals last year. Jeff Green could be the piece that puts them over the edge. <laughs> That's some high praise. But moving on, um, we've got, speaking of conference championships, Houston was a team that made it last year in the West. Mm-hmm. Uh, Atlanta made it in the East. They both lost to Cleveland and Golden State, respectively. Yeah. Uh, and this year, both teams seem to be struggling early. There were talks around the trade deadline of them blowing up their team entirely. Um, who do you think is the biggest dumpster fire at this point right now? Who, who do you think is in more trouble moving forward? I definitely think it's Houston just because they've been, you know, sort of discombobulated and, you know, uh, just – in a Not bad good. Spot yeah, in a bad spot McHale, from, the, for from the beginning of the year. They started off the year with a bad record. They fired their coach, which I didn't think Huge was the mistake. problem. And now you have yeah. this whole spat going on between Dwight Howard and James Harden, and I just don't think it's it's going to work out. Atlanta, on the other hand, I mean, they still have a great foundation in Coach Budenholzer, who was the coach of the year last year. And they have so many more assets that are tradable. But those, those tradable assets aren't that tradable because they only have them locked in to next year. Past next year, all those guys are free agents. They have three guys on their books for the 2017-2018 season. Pretty sure it's four, but okay. Uh, four with a player option. You've got two guys on a team option and then a guy on like a qualifying offer or something like that. It's, it's really shaky at best. And so no one's going to take those trade assets because they don't know if they're going to stay there. There are Whereas a lot of Houston, guys that you can package together in Atlanta. Yeah, but for what? What are you going to get for a guy that you're only going to get a star for, for Al year? Horford for half a year though? For I don't think anyone's going to give up a star. Corver, you look at, Teague, Paul Millsap. That's true. They have good guys now, but looking, looking what are at you going to do with Houston? Look Nobody Houston. wants Dwight. Their problem is Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard has said already he's going to be gone after this year, so that alleviates that mm. problem. They've got a team they can build around: Trevor Ariza, Sam Decker, uh, Harrell. You've got uh, those you've are got rookies Beverly. that aren't proven. Okay, but they're go- so they're rookies, so you're going to have time to build with them. You've got Harden locked in for a little bit longer. Patrick Beverly, Clint Capella, who's been playing pretty well. I think that that team looks a lot better than Atlanta, who has – they have no direction. They don't even have a superstar, really, to build around. 
Yeah, but I think that's better for them because right now you just have the watch James Harden show in Houston. Basically, it's I got them to the conference championship last year. Yeah, but it's not it's it's not enough for them to win. They're not going to beat the San Antonios, even the Golden the Golden States or the Oklahoma Cities. I think they I think they're a lot more. Atlanta has a good Atlanta foundation playing, of defense <laughs> and offensive play uh, because of Coach Budenholzer, and that got and them swept last. Houston year. Houston is basically playoffs. lost in limbo. <laughs> That's all we have for you, though, this week. Thanks for watching. Have a good week.